in woodland ways by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by phil schempf out of the poignant glare the shadeless heat of summer noon beseech thee follow me into the dim dream-haunted secrecy the cool green glooms the grotto deep retreat of yon old wood down aisles of lichened trees gray merlins clasped by lissom vivians of clinging vine to cloistered sylvan glens where nature weaves her fairest mysteries here let us rest a little find surcease for feet grown weary of the thridded street that echoes ever to the ceaseless beat of human tread a brief while know the ease of dreamful rest to slumbrous languors stilled on orient rugs of dappled mosses spread in nooks where blossom purple white and red the flowers summer's lavish hands have spilled wild woodland creatures near us unafraid some strange enchantment doth the forest hold was that a sun-gleam or a wand of gold by tricksy puck or wanton aerial swayed old oaks and beeches open wide their doors and hamadryads veiled in golden sheen floating diaphanous or robes of green walk with still feet the forest's russet floors lo here are fairies hidden flower bells their wood nymphs fleeing from pursuing fawns and naiads fleshed with hues of rosy dawns lie dreaming by white streams in dusky dells we tread dim paths untrod by foot of man and hark the horn of dian ringing clear while faint delusive thin now far now near meseems i hear the oaten pipe of pan and while o'erhead the plaining wood dove grieves the cardinal a winged scarlet flower sprays all the air with song a golden shower of flute notes sifting downward through the leaves ah sweet enchantment doth the forest hold for nature's self doth haunt these woodland ways my fevered brow on her cool breast she lays and care slips from me as a garment old end of poem this recording is in the public domain ashes of roses by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c skies glooming overhead autumn winds sighing bare yonder garden bed flowers low lying all their rich radiance fled all their pale petals shed wan wraiths of summer sped in autumn's closes crimson and cream and gold strewn on earth's bosom cold mingling with umber mold ashes of roses see in yon wading west rich roses blowing on heaven's palimpsest on god's message glowing rose hues and amethyst drenched in purpurate mist darkness with day keeps tryst night's curtain closes quenched is the burning gold shadowed the upland woad day's fires grow dull and cold ashes of roses so on this heart of mine shadows are lying lotus and rue entwine dim dreams are dying stilled is the thrill divine spilled is the amber wine dimly the cold stars shine wan age discloses all youth's bright blossoms dead all love's rare radiance sped all hope's pure petals shed ashes of roses End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Challenge by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. To have lived, 
to have loved to have triumphed what more can the world bestow i stand at close of the conflict my foot on the neck of my foe prone in the dust lies the demon despair still shouting his shibboleth to the treacherous amazon dark-browed fate and her grisly comrade death to have lived to have felt in my veins the surge of the rich red tide of life the quickening stir of the strong man's heart that thrills to the sound of strife to have wrested success from defeat to have striven and struggled and won shall this seem a small thing think you when the battle of ages is done to have loved to have known all raptures the rapture supernal divine to have felt the throb of your heart on my heart and the bloom of your lips pressed to mine to have ranked with the gods on olympus myths tell us immortal jove cleft with his swan wings the blue of the sky for boon of mortals love i have lived i have loved i have triumphed let death come or early or late i hurl my challenging gauntlet full in the face of fate fate may make wreck of a future how can she alter the past i have tasted the sweets of life's chalice why shrink from the lees at the last how should i cavil at aught that shall come i stand with your head on my breast i have fought as i might i have gained you beloved to god's mercy the rest though the heavens darken above me and the sky be shrunk as the scroll in the wreck and ruin of river worlds should i falter o soul of my soul though the demon despair where he vanquished lies still utter his sibboleth i fling my glove in the face of fate and smile in the eyes of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain and yet by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c upon the meads where we wont to stray guiling with springtime hopes the winter hours the spring has smiled yon slope that late groomed gray and sternly said neath april's tender showers grows green and glad again the rippled grass a soundless sea o'er which white cloud sails pass breaks at my feet in billows foamed with flowers and blue-eyed myrtle blooms with lashes wet smile to me through their tears the skies are blue and life is sweet to-day and hope seems true my heart is barren of its long regret and yet the willow wears a wistful green a dream of summer warmth the wine sweet breezes hold fair wildings blow bright buttercups agleam light shining sequins scattered on the woad and daffodils a wealth of fairy gold the building birds their coming bliss presage with lilt and lyric brimming o'er the page of nature's volume bound in green and gold here mid the birds and blossoms neath the blue my heart unburthened of the old regret let me forget long striving to forget for life is sweet to-day and hope seems true and yet end of poem this recording is in the public domain the master player by lee gordon giltner read for librivox.org 
by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Mute was the mighty organ, none might break. The silence that has thralled it since was stilled. The master hand beneath whose touch it thrilled to music such as choiring seraph make until a mightier master came to wake the elusive chords and subtle harmonies that lay imprisoned in the cold white keys and once again the soul of music spake methought my soul's most perfect melodies no hand again to sonance could evoke a silent harp whose potence none might prove but lo one came who swept its chords and woke celestial strains divinest harmonies responsive to the master touch of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain After Bloom by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Gay was her garden as some gorgeous fabric, Weft on an orient loom, Star set upon the sword quaint, Old-time blossoms, Wrought broidery of bloom, Verbenas, dahlias, asters, scarlet cannas like torches flaming tall methought the fair old face enframed in silver the sweetest flower of all and one rare rose she watched each year with hoping till the dear eyes grew dim but ere a single blossom burst in beauty god took her home to him yet when the spring next woke the earth to laughter and boon of blossom gave starred was the rose with white unearthly flowers we laid them on her grave and so messums the bud we woo most fondly nor light nor perfume shed and love's gold-hearted rose and hope's star flower off bloom when we are dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain. To Bliss Carmen by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Great-hearted brother to the wilderness, Comrade of wind and sea, Interpreter of nomad nature, er the quickening stir a spring sap thrills the wood from sullen stress of winter spell away from thronged press of urban ways thy wild feet wander far tracking the steps of some white northern star whose rays are beacon to thy restlessness weird mystic of the northland's mystery though frontest the unseen shadow nor dost fear to meet the scarlet hunter on the trail pagan as pan to all things sylvan dear nature's own vagrant buoyant driftless free all winds and woods and waters cry thee hail end of poem this recording is in the public domain When Loved Passed By by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I dreamt of love in the golden glory Of youth unshadowed by cloud or care Steeped in the love lore of song and story I said, My love shall be wondrous fair I said, her hands shall be filled with flowers my heart shall tell me when love draws nigh she 
shall steal sweet boon from the graceless hours her eyes shall be blue as the seral sky her hair shall be bright as the star's gold gleaming her lips shall be red with her heart's rich wine her face shall be fair as my fondest dreaming each pulse of my being shall call her mine then long for the voice of my heart i hearkened tranced in love's hoping all hope else forgot i waited lonely the daylight darkened the twilight deepened but love came not then one passed by in the dusking shadows the night's dust shadows slept on her hair she passed like a gleam o'er the dew-drenched meadows and my heart throbbed fast but she was not fair her face was pale and her dark eyes pleading her smile was wistful and gravely sweet she passed me by where i stood unheeding and dropped a violet at my feet she went her way o'er the silent meadows ah traitorous heart that you tricked me so i sat alone in the deepening shadows love had passed by and i did not know end of poem this recording is in the public domain hedonism euthanism by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c hedonism since we must sleep the endless sleep at last since life's grim juggernaut neath ruthless wheels crushes the heart since age like winter steals on youth's fair flowered fields with blighting blast then to the gods our doubts and fears be cast enough of sorrow joyance is our due gather the roses spurn the envenomed rue fling to the waiting winds the pallid past steep thee in mellow moods and dear desires pluck love's flame-hearted flower ere it dies call nectared kisses sweet as morning's breath warm chastity at passion's purple fires nepenneth quaff till drain the chalice lies after the shrouded sleep the dreamless dark of death euthanism if in the spirit glows no spark divine if soulless dust return to dust again if after life but death and dark remain then it were well to make the moment thine but shant steeping soul and sense in wine in lotus lulling languors fond desires that heat the heart with fierce unhallowed fires till pleasure surst like transform us into swine but if some subtler spirit thrill our clay some godlike flame illume this fleeting dust promethean fire snatched from the olympian height then must we choose the nobler higher way seeking the beautiful the pure the just the ultimate crown triumph of the right end of poem this recording is in the public domain Under the Leaves by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The phalanxes of corn stand grim and serried, Dull gold the sodden sheaves, The violets that smiled with spring are buried Under the leaves. Along the land the winter's doom is creeping, all vainly autumn grieves and she who made my heart sweet spring is sleeping under the leaves end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Carmen by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Night in Seville and the twinkle Of stars in the far azure set The mandolin's torturing tinkle the click of the castanet music and wine and low laughter love and a torment of tune hate and a poignant thereafter under the yellow moon here in the night i await her under the slumberous moon yearns my fierce spirit to mate her all my sick senses a swoon beneath the wild sway of her dancing passion and pride are at war thrall to her amorous glancing grandee and torridor carmen gitana behold her bright passion flower of the south soft southern languors enfold her scarlet the bloom of her mouth passionate sensuous cruel raying warm laughter and light a ruby a scintillant jewel set on the brow of the night all the wild rhythm of her dancing leith with the jaguar's grace all the sweet fire of her glancing the love litten blur of her face and awe in my fierce arms to hold her this strange scarlet flower of the south close to my heartbeat to fold her drinking the wine of her mouth sweet thou art weary with dancing sick of the music and light praises and overbold glancing steal with me into the night out of the riot of laughter out of the torment of tune love and close kisses thereafter under the sensuous moon carmen my fierce arms enfold thee bright passion flower of the south close to my hot heart i hold thee crushing the flower of thy mouth love for the loving that swayed me passion for passion long past hate for the hate that betrayed me my dirk in your side at the last end of poem this recording is in the public domain to r d mclean by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c if words were winged arrows tipped with flame far flying through the vast time and space if errato should lend me some rare grace then might i dare to breathe in song your name a player king unmoved by all renown acclaim and praise that wait upon your name you pluck a laurel from the wreath of fame then careless of the guerdon cast it down End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love and Death by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Ever athwart life's sunlit upland ways falleth the shadow of impending death and still lies flowers beneath its blighting breath to ashes wither and to dust her bays what were the worth of hard-won power or praise awaits us all the grave cell dark and deep the greedy grave worms maw the awful sleep when death his cold hand on our pulses lays what then the end of action or of strife the sphinx riddle of the universe nature's unsolved enigma 
who may prove life's passion play all blindly men rehearse but yet our recompense for birth for life for death itself me seems is deathless love end of poem this recording is in the public domain a winter landscape by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a mystic world mantled in white simar arkney spun with argent wolf her weed starred with strange crystals wrought from frozen spar sprent with pearl frost flowers girt with diamond breed rubied with berries red as drops of blood befringed with gilded many irised gems broidered with lace weft of an elfin brood hoar filigree to deck her garment hems sheer slanting down the sky an opal light pierces the snow blur's veil of wanish gray in iridescent sheen tinging the dazzling white with amethystine gold or beryl ray along the west the transient sunset gleam an ardor brief crimson on crimson grows till all the waning sky in cardine glows like blown petals of a shattered rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain roses and rue by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c one a swift thought flashed to my mind that day when i first saw you regally tall mid a throng of pygmies a very soul how some woman's heart must admit your sway some woman's soul to your soul be thrall and though not for me were the rapture to prove you i thrilled as i thought how a woman might love you then strange that our eyes for a moment should meet and hold each other a breathless space that a light as of dawn should leap into your face that the lips that were stern should an instant grow sweet ere you turned at a word with a courtier's grace and i knew that though many a woman had loved you till that moment the glance of no woman had moved you then you stood at my side and one murmured your name the proud old name that you worthily wore and i drank the soul chalice fate's mandate upbore to my lips as the fire of your glance leapt to flame what need were of words heart speaks heart evermore and i knew that were mine but the rapture to prove you how deeply how dearly one woman might love you two do i idly dream as the village maid who thinks as she spins of a princekin gay on a prancing steed who shall come her way to woo her and win her and bear her away through the vastly depths of the forest shade to a palace set in a sylvan glade to love her for a and a day is it like that he with his princely pride the son of a proud old race shall stoop with copy to us kingly grace to lift me up to the vacant place to reign like a queen at his side can the world afford him no worthier bride no bride with a queenlier grace a a foolish dream for a sordid day when men seek power 
and women gold gone is the chivalrous age of old when maids were loving and men were bold and good king arthur held knightly sway all love and knighthood were laid away with the curious and helm of old but a horseman rides to the wicket gate all my pulses proclaim it he my knight who has parted the waves of the sea who has cleft the wide world in his searching for me fond foolish dreaming for surely fate decrees him the winning a worthier mate than a simple girl like me three why does he come to me with his deep impassioned eyes stealing my soul from me surely a high emprise for such a one as he to smile an hour on me to win a worthless prize would he might let me be proud am i proud as he for my name as his is old what should he say to me i have neither lands nor gold ah a merry jest twill be to win my heart from me the tale will be soon told would he might let me be four swept swept away is my vaunted pride on a flood tide of tenderness i envy the dog that bounds to his side and the chestnut mare he is wont to ride cross moor and mead when the day is fine as she lays her head in a mute caress gainst the arm of her lord and mine five ah silver and gold of the glad june morning gold of the sunshine and silver of dew dew drops gems all the meads adorning our love and the rose time a theme for scorning roses roses dream not of rue am i not loved by you antiphonial to sweet sylvan singers the brook with its maddening gladdening rune and my lover's kiss still thrills and lingers lingers and burns on my tremendous fingers all birds in a very riot of tune pour out my joy to the heart of june he loves me loves me my heart is singing heart o oh heart of my heart is it true song on my lips from my soul upbringing a passion of bliss to the breezes flinging roses roses nor dream of rue i am beloved by you six to be his wife calm all my soul is filling a calm too deep for smiles or even tears a perfect trust to slumber subtly stilling my wilhelm doubts and fears each little common thing to me seems rarer my life each day becomes more dear to me love am i fair ah fain would i be fairer and yet more fair for thee like to a priestess some loved shrine adorning i deck the charms but poorly prized till late the beauty once i held too slight for scorning to thee now consecrate as if some god of old had stooped to love me some star had pierced my darkness with its ray i worship thee an idol throne above me forgetting thou art clay rejoicing in the gift that god has given i may forget the giver love i fear lest i shall end forget to sigh for heaven when heaven for me is here seven strange that a love supreme should be swayed by a pretty pride 
as a straw might turn aside the swift on flowing tide of a mighty seaward stream i know that the fault was mine but i cannot will not speak how should i suppliant meek his gracious pardon seek though the fault were mine all mine a though my heart should break something or pride or shame forbids me that i should claim as mine the fault the blame a though my heart should break eight last night he came to me his dark eyes grave and sweet eyes that i could not meet to crave my pardon mine with that knightly courtesy which makes his least deed fine what fiend took hold on me i would nor speak nor heed though he bent his pride to plead he all unused to sue though he sought full tenderly for a pardon not his due fool to have played with fire had i not full often heard how when his wrath was stirred it burst all bounds and leapt higher and even higher like flames by the storm wit swept yet though his face was white with a passion that shook his soul not once did he wave control though his heart to its depths was stirred he leashed his wrath that night nor uttered one bitter word pride held me stubbornly dumb stilling what words i would say while i flung my heart's treasure away while i tampered with fire to my cost till i knew the ultimate end had come i had matched pride with love and lost nine what poison pen has written the words that bar my breath what hard harsh hand has smitten my soul with death love my love these the words i read the vision and dream of a life have died hurt to the heart by the words you said angered stung by a wounded pride mad with the thought that your love was dead i have wedded a loveless unloved bride would i had died instead my heart refuses to understand the words that burn my brain palsied stunned by a felling blow struck by a cherished hand i am all too numb for pain dead to a deathless woe helpless to understand shall i ever feel again ten awake alive to pain the first steel gleam of morn stabs deep the heart i thought had shrunk to dust the love i prayed might die to loveless scorn awakes and cries a oh god how is it just a fault so slight such meed of pain should pay that one mad word in pride and anger spoken should leave two lives forever crushed and broken should plate a scourge to lash my soul for a how can a just god see men suffer thus unheedful of the cosmic cry of pain unmoved by all the pangs that torture us knowing our prayers and tears alike are vain like to a wanton boy who feels no thrill of pity for the weak his strength holds thrall who pins a helpless butterfly against a wall watching the bright wings flutter and grow still we are the sport of some malignant power who nails us to our crosses hard and fast who sees us flutter for a little hour struggle and suffer and grow still at last 
who hears untouched the ceaseless cosmic groan wrung from his creature's tortured lips away he will not hear or heed what need to pray there is no hand to help we stand alone father forgive i know not what i say frenzied tortured torn on the rack of pain teach these pain writhen lips once more to pray help me to trust again eleven a year how slight a space when winged with ecstasy an aeon dark to me he has brought her home god lend me grace to-night in the throng i shall see his face he has long forgotten me a year i have learned to smile i have taught my eyes to lie i have lived and laughed and sung the while i have only longed to die twelve i have seen him once again there in the throng with his wife an eagle matched with a pitiful wren bitter in sooth has his portion been chained to a clog for life strange that our eyes as of yore should meet that hold each other a breathless space that the dawn light of old should illuminate his face that the lips that were stern should an instant grow sweet touched with the old-time tender grace but his eyes were haggard and old with pain traitors to thwart his resolute will they told me the struggle was vain all vain he loves me loves me still thirteen cruel that i should be glad that he loves and suffers still yet how should my soul be sad that his passionate resolute will cannot crush the love that is stronger than he the love that is all for me the year has left its trace cover it how he will on the proud impassive face and i know how he suffers still thrall to a love that is stronger than he a love that is all for me surely ah surely i know i who have known his love i who have loved him so what such a bond must prove linked to a loveless unloved wife chained to a clog for life fourteen she loves him not they say save for his lands and gold she is narrow selfish cold stabbing and wounding his soul each day growing further and further away from the heart it was hers to hold yet not all blameless he a woman is quick to feel what man would fain conceal surely she can but see that not to his life is she nay nor can ever be i am happier happier far than he he is meshed in a galling silken hold bound with a jeweled band of gold while i at least am free and i know what his daily life must be linked with a nature paltry slight he with his generous kingly soul stung and goaded past all control by a thousand petty barbs of venom and spite once but once have we met and we spoke of trivial things of the changes a twelvemonth brings of late summer lingering yet ah how should a heart that has loved forget traitors ever to thwart his will his eyes confirm what i half divine a bitter bootless victory mine he cannot choose but to love me still fifteen 
whose was the fault the blame she has fled and left him free free but a stain of shame rests on the proud old name at a bitter cost she has set him free free with a blemished fame and he with the pride of his race with a resolute calm control locks in his heart the heart's disgrace shows of his shame no subtlest trace hiding the hurt of a stricken soul neath the calm of a passionless face he had deemed it a cowardly thing to fly while the village prated anent his shame and an added blot on his noble name by his own hand to die but oft in the deep of night i hear borne on the wild night wind the beat of the mare's hoofs thundering past and my heart is clutched by an icy fear of a direful thing that may chance at last for ride he never so far so fast black care rides hard behind sixteen last night i stood in the gloaming's gray ere the moon came into the sky he came to me for a last good-bye at last he is going away his face in the dusk showed stern and set old and haggard and worn with pain dear i may never see you again mine but the mead regret how can i ask you to share my shame how can i give you my blemished name yet how shall the heart forget not in my life save a dream have i a dream a vision too fair to be a rose that blooms mid the rue for me not but a dream good-bye and then ere he lifted his bridal rein to ride away down the darkening land he bent and touched with his lips the hand i had laid on the chestnut's mane seventeen something my senses will scarce recall the horror that came in the night to tell the mare had galloped riderless home blown and bleeding and flecked with foam and they found him there by the sunken wall hurt to the death by the desperate fall how it had chanced he could only tell ere the merciful numbness stole his brain how the chestnut rose to the leap and fell then his senses closed on the shocks of pain he spoke then told me but once again to whisper my name with his struggling breath thank god he suffered so brief a while then peacefully sank on the breast of death dead with his lips a smile how can i wish him alive again lying so peacefully placidly still with that carven smile on his marble face how can i pray that his heart should thrill to wakening and wakening's pain lying so peacefully placidly still with the old sweet smile on his quiet face dead to the sting of a heart's disgrace how should i wish him a lesser grace how should i strive with a wiser will yet how can the heart that is reft divine death's mystical measureless charity the cry of the stricken king is mine would i have died for thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain severance by lee gordon giltner read for librivox.org by greg giordano 
Newport Ritchie, Florida. Not severed by long leagues of lonely land, nor sundered by wide wastes of sounding sea, but ever side by side and hand in hand, and yet apart are we. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spartacus by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. He stands storm browed, imperial chief of all Rome's gladiators brave beyond all others fearless in belief a captive but no slave his brow is like a god's a brow of power lips soft with human sweetness ere the day he entered the arena and the hour he first beheld man's life-blood mixed with clay felt rise within him bestial strange desires and savage instincts in a brutal heart that battened on men's blood burned with unhallowed fires of slaughter till a thing apart a hired butcher of his fellow-men he stands daring the fasting lion in his den or some fierce gladiator on the blood-stained sands a savage chief of yet more savage men he stands with massive throat and thews of steel while loud acclaims the listening heavens fill and roman women smile he does not know or feel a moment's joy or one triumphant thrill he heeds them not he sees as in a dream his home in sarasala's citron groves a youth again beside some purling stream with gladsome heart and joyous pipe he roves he sees anon that gentle shepherd boy who knew no harsher sound than plaining flute in the arena stand rome's sport and toy a bestial blood-stained hireling brute then swift through every throbbing pulsing vein the fierce unconquered spirit of old sparta ran rome's fiercest gladiator is to-day again a thracian and a man end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dead leader by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida after the waiting and the anguished weeping he lies at rest at last how should we mourn him tranced in peaceful sleeping his pain all past the rites excalibur his strong arm wielded a little space lies low the victor in life's sometime strife has yielded to man's last foe late all too late our loyal tribute giving a loyal fearless soul he whom we honored late so late while living lies dead beside the goal yet this the solace of these long sad hours while we who loved him weep we breathe an answering message in our flowers to him who lies asleep to him whom soon the deep cold earth must cover to him whose dying breath left to our hearts a message bridging over the dark abyss of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain Hagar by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. To have known heaven and then to walk in hell 
is it not hell to know his face no more supplanted spurned and thrust without his door seeing another with my loved lord dwell sheltered within the tents of wedded love while i must roam the desert of despair ah god above me hearken to my prayer send down thy mercy on me as a dove folding its white wings on my tortured breast let me not see the anguish of my child with hunger torn with thirsts consuming wild strike us o god into thy deep dark rest lo i have sinned i kneel and kiss the rod but she the wife who cast us forth to die i curse her not judge thou between us god which in thy sight is guiltier she or i end of poem this recording is in the public domain flower fancies by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida water lilies they float ethereal unearthly white upon the bosom of the darkling mere raying the dusk with slumberous silver light eidolons of lost moons erst mirrored there salvias wooing the wind's wild caresses courting the sun's fierce flame wantons in cardinal dresses flaunting their scarlet shame yellow jasmine like little yellow stars that fallen down hang pendulous enmeshed among the boughs mild golden radiances they gem the crown fair summer sets upon their beauteous brows sunflowers they bloom in lowly places unmeet for fairer beds like swarthy ethiop faces with yellow turbaned heads the rose all orient odors spikenard balm and myrrh perfumes of araby and farthest ind sweet incense from the chaliced heart of her she pours upon the feet of every wind end of poem this recording is in the public domain Circe by Lee Gordon Giltner, read for LibriVox.org, by Samuel Green. Where fair Ia smiles across the sea, to olive-crowned Italia the enchantress dwells. A woman set about with dreams and spells, weird incantations, charms, and mystery. Most strangely pale and strangely fair is she yet deadlier than the hemlock drawed her smile darker than stygian glooms her subtle guile drawn by her deep eye spell across the sea the argive galleys wing till beached they lie upon the fatal strand the greeks beguile the hasting hours with revelry and wine within her halls eftsoon strange sorcery the circe weaves they who were men erewhile now grovel at her feet transformed to swine neath myriad mellow tapers golden glow a woman stands proud insolent and fair a single gem meshed in the dusk dyed hair burns like the evening star descending low adown the darkening sky upon the snow of her full blossom breast deep rubies lie her fragrant presence breathes sweet sorcery the shimmering saffron satin's flexile flow outlines each sinuous curve a sensuous smile 
A touch that fires to flame each pulsant vein. One draught of eyes more deep than depths of wine. The senses steal, the soul and brain beguile. Till all seem merged in feeling, and again, a Circe spell transforms men into swine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To A M M, by Lee Gordon Giltner, read for LibriVox.org, by Samuel Green. She's so shy, this little love of mine, so pale and pure, almost I fear to speak, the love that thrills my every pulse like wine, yet brings no answering flush to her fair cheek. She is so calm that passion's stirring strain, to chance and soft and low, unbidden dies, the while her longing lover sighs in vain, for one soft love glance from her down-dropped eyes. A lily she that from its garden bed, into the golden sunshine, glad and sweet, lifts to far sapphire skies its radiant head, unheedful of the base weeds at its feet. Yet, should one loving reverently kneel, and draw the lily's close-shut leaves apart, perchance those waxen petals might reveal, enshrined within, a glowing golden heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Loveless by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida As some poor starveling at a palace gate Sees curtain gleams from banquet lit in halls Hear song out ringing from the festal walls, scents viands that shall princely palates sate, yet in the outer gloom may only wait, crouched in the cold, thrice thankful for some least, mean morsel flung him from the plenteous feast, poor bondman to the ball and chain of fate, so lonely at love's outer gate I stand, and glimpse the brightness and the bliss within where love lit smiles transmute the dark to day i wait without and may not enter in long wistfully i gaze then void of hand and starved of spirit sadly turn away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Clyde the Sunflower by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Samuel Green In pale green twilight lands, under the sea, Her rainbow palace stands, arise in opaline, A gay in almondine, corals and pearly shells, Swept from deep ocean dells, strewing the silver strand, Staring the golden sands in the green twilight lands under the sea. All through the dreamy day under the sea where the sea maidens play. Twinning foam garlands fair, girding their golden hair. Clad in her moss robe green, veiled in her bright locks sheen. Where the dim seaweeds sway, trackless her white feet stray. All through the dreamy day under the sea. Or, like a star, she glides over the sea. Deftly her steeds she guides, goldfish that glint and gleam. Jewels alive they seem, softly the surges swell. Rocking the rosy shell, where the sea maiden rides, wafture of wooing tides, swift as a star she glides over the sea. One day she lifts her eyes up from the sea, where the great sun god flies over the world afar, guiding his golden car, all his star brow aglow, all his bright hair aflow. Dawn in his radiance lies, dusk at his coming dies. Hapless she lifts her eyes 
up from the sea. Swiftly his steeds speed on over the sea. Soon is the splendor flown. Alone on the shore she stands, stretching imploring hands, lifting impassioned eyes, where the last sun gleam dies, all the day's brightness gone. Hapless, she stands alone. Heedless, the god speeds on over the sea. Ever her wistful gaze over the sea yearns on the sun god's rays till by some subtle power changed to a golden flower. Still in her robe of green, crowned with her gold hair's sheen, slight on her stem she sways, yet does her yearning gaze follow the sun god's rays over the sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Bondage by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida What can it profit a man, Though he have the soul of a god, Sunk in the form of a beast, With a senseless simian face? What can the world perceive Of the subtler inward grace, Breathing upon the dust Of the coarse clay clod? What knows the world of me, the me that is prisoned within, seeing only the self that sickens its sensitive eyes? How can it know that this hateful mask hides not the sneer of sin, that this cloak of crass, crude flesh is a trusty soul's disguise? What can I hope to win? Which of the gifts men prize? What can I have or hold of the bounteous boon I crave? I, with the coarse stubbed hands, the dull and narrow eyes, the low-browed leer of the brutal base-born slave. What can I know of love? I, with my ape-like face, frightening the tender trust of the timorous shrinking maid, who, drawn by my deep soul's spell, half yields to the soul's embrace then looks on its hideous mask and trembles and flees dismayed yet must the soul of fire chained to this cursed clay galled by its fetters of flesh seared with a thousand scars shriek and struggle and beat its breast on its prison bars through the night's long dark of despair till the dawning of ultimate day till the glow of that ultimate dawn transfigure the tortured face and the sacred fire within crumble the coarse clay clod till the soul breathed on by an unseen unknown grace stripped of its bonds of flesh stand face to face with its god End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Singer by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Beneath thy Midas touch life's sullen grays are thrilled to sudden gold as some far gleam from wings of helios athwart thy dream irradiates for the earth's darksome ways wild woodland voices ripple through thy lays sweet silvern murmurs from some deep delled spring brook tree and flower and each insensate thing the throstles call the calm of sun-steeped days a glint of sunshine on the swallow's wing fern filigrees the drowsy drone of bee made drunk with draughts of purple wild grape wine all these orphean music holds for thee 
and all thy days and dreams companioning walks nature with her hand close clasped in thine end of poem this recording is in the public domain blossom of brine by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by phil Schempf. morn and a white sail winging over the sunlit waves a song on the breezes ringing up from the coral caves where sea nymphs white arms lifting wreaths for the sea god twine of the frail foam flowers drifting on the wave crests blossom of brine night and a dark rack flying over the sullen waves a dirge on the night wind sighing up from the cold sea caves where sea nymphs white arms lifting wreaths for a pall entwine for a still white face is drifting on the wave crest blossom of brine end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Memory by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Strange that across the vast of varied years, Fraught with life's wanted alloy, Mingled joy and pain, Sun-kissed with smiles, or gloomed with mists of tears, Old memories should wake to life again, old thoughts and dreams words breathed by lips long dumb songs sung by voices silent now for a like hosts of speechless spectres thronging come dim formless wraiths of each dear vanished day strange that a fragment of a life replete a few brief hours as men measure time a chapter in life's book closed now yet vaguely sweet as odor laden zephyrs from some far-off clime should drift across my heart while joysome memories rise of golden moments snatched from arcady of silver sails and opal tinted skies of viridescent earth and sapphire sea of lotus land where pleasure dreamful lies of kindred souls responsive each to each of thoughts half hidden by deep tinted eyes sweet traitors telling that denied to speech the merest fragment of a life replete a sungly mid existences somber grays eyes hands and hearts that for one moment meet in strange sweet yearning then divided ways end of poem this recording is in the public domain to margaret by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c maiden of varying mood thaya thou hast wooed thepsis thereafter till neath thy lyric sway each heart must tribute pay tears blent with laughter so in the days to be this do we crave for thee through life's hereafter throughout the changing years may all thy griefs and tears be blent with laughter end of poem this recording is in the public domain regret by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c shimmer of rose and pearl sheen on an opal sky day's crimson banners unfurl purple pleached shadow gleams die dawn flowers burgeoning fair 
meads with the dawn dews wet rare is the morn all rare but in the heart regret a vague regret clouds like the scattered snow stippling a sapphire sky fever and heat and glow zephyrs that swoon and die drowseth the nooning air on meads with red poppies set fair is the day ah fair but in the heart regret and still regret flashes of burning gold flushes of crimson light faint on a waning wold stealeth the silent night one from a casement bar leaneth with lashes wet watching the last wan star fade like a heart's regret a vain regret end of poem this recording is in the public domain god bless you dear by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by linda Marie nielsen vancouver b c dear patient face and placid brow dear lips that smiled despite of pain brave toll-worn hands so helpful now sweet spirit free from earthly stain within the doorway mother stands the while a merry barefoot lad across the springtime meadow lands goes whistling schoolward blithe and glad and where the pathway breasts the hill i stay my steps and turn to hear her loving voice as lingering still she calls good-bye god bless you dear dear patient face and furrowed brow dear lips that smile through all life's pain brave toll-worn hands so weary now sweet soul unmarred by earthly stain within the doorway mother stands the while a man oppressed with care across the waning autumn lands goes toll-ward fain to strive and bear and where the pathway breasts the hill i stay my steps and turn to hear her trembling voice as lingering still she calls good-bye god bless you dear dear peaceful face and placid brow dear lips that smile secure from pain brave toll-worn hands soft folded now sweet spirit freed from earthly stain within god's portal mother stands the while a man forspent with care seeketh the far-off meadow lands by faith made strong to strive and bear and as of breast life's weary hill i oft times pause misseems i hear the well-loved accents breathing still the old fond prayer god bless you dear end of poem this recording is in the public domain Roses by Lee Gordon Giltner, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Where leaves the rose of yesterday, Rubiat. A red rose burns upon his breast, where erst a white rose lay, above his feverant heart throb pressed, the red rose of today what recks he of the flower that dies for roses bloom alway low in the dust forgotten lies the rose of yesterday but yet to-day's red rose must die for roses fade away to-morrow crushed forgot twill lie a rose of yesterday end of poem this recording is in the public domain the poet 
by Lee Gordon Giltner, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. One fluting on sad woods, Pan's flight left drear, one crying down the wayward wind of chance, one piping unto feet that will not dance, and mourning unto ears that will not hear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shylock by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Cold craft and adverse look from out his eyes, his face with evil passion marred and seamed looks frowningly upon a christian world behind that hateful mask a demon lurks to urge the narrow soul to darksome deeds of violence and greed of hate and ruth his god a god of wrath a tyrant force to met to helpless souls eternal doom a juggernaut a hard unsentient power but yet less potent than the yellow gold those crooked talons clutch and for the witch the miser shylock fain would sell his soul end of poem this recording is in the public domain to charles j o'malley by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Sonnet As when above orchestral undertone The plaining wail of muted violin, The hushed oboe and the distant din Of muffled drum or viol's raucous groan, Sudden arises one pure voice-like tone, A silver trumpet's tongue that stirs the soul to feel the theme and the harmonious whole a sonnet setting seems for that alone so high above earth's murmurous stir and strife rises thy voice in clear and ringing song no minor plaint of dull despairing pain but one true note of hope that bids us along for higher things and all the din of life seems to suburb the sweetness of thy strain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anthesis by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The poet wrought a song of sadness fraught, With all the pain the world's sad heart hath proved. He sang of doubt, and dreams that end in naught, Then smiling, turned and kissed the lips he loved. The poet wrought a song of joyance, thrilled, With all the peace the world's glad heart hath kept. He sang of hope and happy dreams fulfilled, then bent his face upon his hands and wept. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Fortune's Twilight by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The old house totters neath its weight of years like the form of him who shelters there old friendless lone save for the wanton care who flouts him mocks his grief with gibs and jeers and laughs to see his piteous hopes grows fears not his the joy of placid sun-crowned age his dim eyes falter as he scans the page of life's worn album blotted with his tears he sees in dreams the wife he loved long dead 
the son once proud to bear his father's name who mixed his honest blood with dire disgrace the wayward girl who wrought her father shame he sits alone with care the day has fled and twilight falls upon the furrowed face end of poem this recording is in the public domain fate by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c through countless eons sunless and remote a soul went searching for its spirit mate through star-stained space or wind swept deep afloat forever desolate anon another spirit lone of heart goes forth through voiceless void to seek its mate if soon they meet these twain strike hands and part and this is fate end of poem this recording is in the public domain the path of dreams by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c beside the stream that silverly steals on to swell the song of that far sounding sea which breaks upon the utmost shore of thought they who have drunk at song's immortal spring walk with glad feet the upland path of dreams that whitely winds through long lowing lands by one ye clep the way of fools a plain of dust and ashes and of dead sea fruit but by another called the path of hope that leads far up the slope of heart's desire and haply both speak truth for off the way is set with stones that tear the climbing feet and off for roses there is better rue and off for singing there is idle scorn and sneers full oft for smiles yet well we know the upland path of dreams that whitely winds ye clept o'er way of fools or path of hope leads upward ever to the hills of song beside the silent stream whose soundless tide sets ever to the unknown tideless sea they who have drunk of slumber's poppy draught walk with unsandaled feet the path of dreams that winds though gray low-lying fields of sleep to dim dream shores get with dim spectre trees swayed ever by the sweep of unseen wings slow stirring palms and arabesque of ferns and fields of sombre bloom and scentless flowers not of their wonted hue but dimly gray where songless birds like shades of shadows flit and silent winds from poppied meadows blow and here dear presences to us denied by sterner day approach to cry us hail and here a little do we taste the joy of kisses dreamed on lips forever mute a little know the bliss of hope fulfilled and dreams that seem as true as very truth yet well we know that with the stir of dawn waking we must return from sleep's far fields beside the lethran stream whose soundless tide sets ever to the unknown tideless sea that breaks upon the farthest unknown shore they who have quaffed dark asriel's mystic draught walk with still feet the viewless path of dreams that winds through long low-lying fields of sleep to fields elysian or tartanian glooms and haply long for presences denied by sterner life shall come to cry us hail 
bright radiances from realms of light etern or shadows from the shades of awful dis but whether here we taste of hope fulfilled or find our dreams are but as drifted dust from dark of dis or realms of light etern full well we know we shall return no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain an autumn song by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the dim sun slips adown the sky that dies from gold to gray the homing birds that southward fly to my heart's hailing make reply piping good-bye good-bye southward i turn my wistful eyes southward where all my treasure lies whither the homing sparrow flies piping good-bye good-bye the chill blast sweeps the steely sky that glooms a sullen gray soft summer winds that southward fly to my soul's sighting make reply breathing good-bye good-bye southward i turn my longing eyes southward my yearning spirit hies whither or bird or zephyr flies sighing good-bye good-bye end of poem this recording is in the public domain Vain by Lee Gordon Giltner, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Wreath of laurel and crown of bay, and the noisy trump of fame, praise for the singer's deathless lay, and a listening world's acclaim. But the singer sits with his grief alone, where love lies cold and dead the plaudits fall on a heart of stone the soul of his song has fled end of poem this recording is in the public domain sartor restartus by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c Ah, God, be merciful to him who sees. Throw ermine, pomp, and pageantry of kings, though regal, mean, and beauty's witcheries. The poor, weak, shriveled soul that crouches hid within the body's hold. Thrice cursed is he whose soul sees souls of others face to face, who strips the outer man like vestments off and views the naked heart in all its shame and poverty who still must rend the veil of motive purpose false humanity and futile pretense god to walk this world doom still to see what others fain would hide reading men's thoughts as scholars read the page of some old language dead to all save them seeing beneath the tender woman flesh the woman grace the pleading woman's eyes the grisly skeleton the hollow ribs the eyeless sockets and the grinning jaw reading for a the sneer beneath the smile that lie that lurks behind the seeming truth to know that such or haply worse am i a living lie false prophet to myself clothed on with shimmering robes of fallacy and vain deceit ah god where is the truth are all men false or lies the fault in me who vulture like sees only on the taint and leave the pure if haply thus it be in pity take away the subtle sight 
that pierces through give back the old fond faith the young belief in all humanity hide from my view the canker in the rose the taint in truth the blight upon the bloom far better twere to drink the hemlock draught and happy deem it nectar than to find the drop of gall within the nectared cup far better trust repaid with treachery than doubt confirmed ah thou all-seeing god who art the truth make me to see the truth lift from my soul the shadow in the room of doubt send trust let me believe again help me to see the highest in mankind end of poem this recording is in the public domain illumed by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c like to a little child whose straying feet tracking the foxfire's gilding glint and gleam having wandered far afield by marsh and stream while just before the wavering glimmers fleet on and still on where sky and meadow meet till spent and fearful in the gathering gloom at last he sees the guiding light of home where love awaits and mother kisses sweet so was it mine through fens of doubt to stray pursuing still some fair ephraimon or fleeting gleam or shimmering fallacy tis through the deepening dusk a beacon shone set by the hand of love to light the way o father to implicit trust in thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the play by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c in a painted forest of arden in the glare of the garish light in doublet and hose be powdered and rouged you sigh to me night by night attuned to the sway of your cadenced voice as a harp to the wooing wind i thrill at the touch of your painted lips for i am your rosalind could you know that my art in seeming was a dearer thing than art that the love words spoken nightly spring straight from a loving heart could you know that my soul speaks to you a soul and spirit and mind when i gaze deep into your eyes and breathe and i am your rosalind to you tis a vain dissembling a part of the work of the day and the words that your voice makes music but the dull deadlines of the play little you care for the woman you woo save as a foil designed to prove your skill as a lover yet i am your rosalind i merge in the player the woman the actress good at her art must needs look well to each glance and tone must needs play still her part though the woman's soul that must else be mute a soul and spirit and mind cry to your soul in another's words and i am your rosalind end of poem this recording is in the public domain to e p b by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c imperial as that famed elizabeth before whose feet a knight his cloak cast down a sovereign although thine only crown 
love's roses twine for thee elizabeth ah maiden sweeter than morn's nectared breath across thy path no regal robe i fling only a living loving heart i bring to lay at thy dear feet elizabeth end of poem this recording is in the public domain through the dark by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by phil Schempf. last night they laid me in my winding sheet set burning tapers at my feet and head deck me with wan white blossoms faint and sweet and told each other softly she is dead i dumb and dead and shrouded cold and stark i lay where waned the tawny tapers dim pulseless and pale yet through the dreadful dark i lived in thoughts of him the morning came one who had loved me bent above my face with tears and bated breath laid on my heart the roses he had sent and i was glad of death End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Preluding by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Frail fronds of ferns uncurling, blue iris flags unfurling, pale showers of blossoms swirling like clouds of wind-blown snow with fragile wildings playing like two blithe children maying across the glad meads straying together dear we go the silver clouds far drifting vague lights and shadows shifting the sun gleams gold dust sifting down through the latticed leaves gray brooks the meadows lacing young flowers the uplands gracing her fairy broidery tracing the skillful spider weaves from long long day dreams shaken the vivid violets waken his southern haunts forsaken the bluebird flecks the sky a breath of bloom bright heather a golden maytime weather we drift in dreams together together you and i end of poem this recording is in the public domain the heights of silence by lee gordon giltner read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c transcribed from the choir invisible above the valleys peopled fair and warm rise the bleak silent uplands where abide race of lost loves love's recompense denied unspoken unconfessed unsatisfied cold silent heights engirt with zones of storm where love for a unmated must abide the broad sweet downward vistas of the flesh stretch fair and far the calm white spirit height is lone and chill there dimly shines the light of sun and star that burns and beacons bright where sin spreads still her gilding glittering mesh ah warm the valley lone and chill the height yet he who wins the height's sublimity the silent height where loves unlived abide love stainless sublimited purified shall glimpse that land to grosser view denied where love and longing infinite shall be or ever stilled or ever satisfied end of poem this recording is in the public domain.
Andromeda by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Bound ever to a great gray rock of doom, striving with futile hands to rive the chain of woven fear, distrust, and subtle pain, while gaunt wolf waves that leap from out the gloom of doubt's cold sea are snarling at my feet as nearer breathes the dragon of despair foul with dank horrors of his caverned lair and like a clock of doom the dark tides beat i lift my eyes lo sudden sweeps along thoughts empyrean and the vast of dreams one star browed jove-like human orbed messing means his feet are winged with music shod with song ah persis shouldst thus thou pitying leave the sky to lose my bonds then all the fear were gone soul touching soul trust from distrust were one like god and goddesses fronted thou and i despair were slain closed with the unequal strife thy great soul strength should make weak purpose strong thy hand should lead me up the slopes of song thy winged feet guide me to the peaks of life end of poem this recording is in the public domain Requital by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. What though you love me once, man's love at best is but a mood, the fancy of an hour. You held all faith and truth a theme for jest. Love's recompense, a smile you knew your power what though you loved me then you went away and left my life an arid waste of pain and now your best years spent your idols clay you stretch imploring arms to me again what though you love me still what though you say the current of your life toward mine is set as vagrant stars obey the planet's sway, or perfume clingeth to the violet. What though I once loved you, see in yon west. Day's fires have burned to ashes cold and gray, so in my quiet heart love's wild unrest, by its own flame consumed, is dead for a. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. When Fades the Light by Lee Gordon Giltner Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf When fades the light along the western sky, When dies the last dim rose to subtlest gray, When darkling mirror and mead and shadowed lie, and night's wide arms enfold the wearied day when tired lilies ring their vesper bells and dusking leaves speak whispered orison when cassocked twilight breathing benison his rosary of flashing fireflies tells then ends the day-long struggle strong no more i grift far out on fancy's phantom sea setting full sail for that forbidden shore where waiteth love for me when fades the light from out my dying eyes and soul and sense seem slipping soft away when death's swift shallop launched on lethe lies waiting to wing me to the unknown gray when things of time and thought grow strangely dim and the pent spirit strains to loose its bands till from the fettered feet and helpless hands shall fall life's shackles pitiless and grim 
then shall the conflict cease and chain no more my soul shall sail the silent unknown sea until it touch the unforbidden shore where love awaiteth me end of poem this recording is in the public domain butterflies by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c as if a bed of bloom had taken wing bright marigolds nasturtiums zinnias gay they breast the breeze or lightly poising cling to other flowers not animate as they end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the dark forest by lee gordon giltner read for librivox dot org by phil schempf the long gray twilight falls and deeper glooms close round the graying wood that dimmer grows as dies the day's last yearning tint of rose and dusk spins shadows on her eldritch looms the black bat flits the eerie white moth flies wan ghost of yesterday's bright butterfly the dusking forest pools uplooking lie like graveless dead men's staring sightless eyes ah eerie eerie is the lonely wood but lo the fairies light their firefly lamps elusive foxfire flames from marish damps hastes to the morris dance an elfin brood a far bell chimes the cricket cheerly shrills the droning beetle sounds his hoarse bassoon and hyla's trill eth soon the rising moon the ambient air to molten silver thrills then all the lyric night is set to song the cuckoo calls the plaining whippoorwill cries faint and far away more distant still the hoopoe hid his marshy haunts among wails with the cry of some lost soul in pain the nightingale engilds the pulsant dark with golden-throated melody but hark the night-jar's discord mars the perfect strain the night wears on black shadows throng apace the wood is still the moon grows wan and old white marsh mists wreath like clammy arms death cold and moth wings like dead fingers sweep my face the bittern wailing leaves the sombre pool voicing the world old pain that never dies the owl with ghoulish laughter outward flies like some weird vivian shrieking fool and fool End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Insatiate by Lee Gordon Giltner. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When though she lieth mute on yonder hill, though ivy green and shadowy eclectare, have held in tender fold through many a year her quiet grave i fear her fear her still he loved her once a though he hold me fast and sear my lips with kisses burning sweet no touch of mine can make his life replete for man's first love is oftentimes his last a still face glimmers through my dreams for a and when i strain him close with feverish grasp wan grave cold fingers lose the clinging clasp and grave cold lips my fevered kisses stay she lives incarnate in each flower fair her eyes illume the violets in my hand the golden rod that lights the autumn land seems but the scattered stardust of her hair love's perfect flower may never bloom for me 
for me his wife for ah i fear her still who lies forever mute on yonder hill he loved her once would god that i were she end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of the path of dreams by lee gordon giltner